MUFC Real Estate TV. This is the transfer corner and of course we finished off very strong with the Premier League season. Finishing off third and now the rumblings keep going on because we got to look ahead of 2023 with the new summer transfer signings. Join with me in the studio is my brilliant co-host Jarvis Cocker. How are you doing sir today this morning? I'm feeling fine, feeling fine. I slept well. How are you Mick? Fantastic. Busy, busy, busy. Now, it's going to be a busy summer. I started to work as an intermediate and in transfer market in the agency side of it, as per usual, uh, per every summer in January. So it's been a lot of, lot of interesting um, targets and information that's come to my attention that I want to talk to you about today, Jarvis. But of course, um, we're here to talk about, of course, Manchester United and we will start with the transfer targets of the strikers in this episode, in this podcast. So this pod is all about the Eric Ten Hag stri striker targets. In the meantime, people, uh, take a sip on your morning brew of coffee and choice, and we will be back in about 10 seconds. In a bit. <laughs> Has the Premier League ever been more challenging? I feel welcome. Uh, it is my home and I want to achieve success. Okay. What better way to do that to um, kind of dive into the, you know, targets and, you know, since I got some wordings today, like, you know, speaking to the market, you know, the, the, the agency side is very small. Like, you know, you have many intermediates that you can obtain information. And then, of course, you have reports in the media that can sort of backtrack where where the stories are coming from as well. But at the end of the day, we need to check if it has legs or no legs. But, but um, striker position, Jarvis, this is something that everyone has been talking about. This has been clear and obvious. You know, we've been solid in defense, you know, we did a calculation yesterday and a stat that home, we only conceded nine goals and we are kind of the best defense in the Premier League season, by the way. Yeah. But it is just that striker position that is we've been missing. Like for Weghorst didn't work. We saw that. Uh, it was Aloni, uh, Marcus Rashford. Cannot carry the whole team, although Marcus scores 30 goals. Um, Martial, injury prone, not to be counted on. So we haven't had any sort of prolific striker. So let's dive right into it. And that is Victor Osman, Ozzy. This is what everyone's been talking about for, for months and months and months. So Victor Osman had a fantastic season at uh, Napoli. Napoli. Mm. But yeah. there's a big but. Um, we all know that, you know, the club is interested. The only problem is that, you know, he had a very successful season with Napoli. And he's on United's radar. Napoli, on the other hand, are not reluctant to sell him, right? We also know that Chelsea is looking for new strikers. So it might be so that somebody triggers that 150 release clause because it's been said that they're not willing to sort of let him go on the cheap. Although he's got the evaluation according to Transfermark, 100 million, they want 150. And for me, I don't know. Um, I will dive into that a little bit later on because some of the Nigerian fan base don't rate him that much and we will look into that as well. The reason per se, he's played in the Serie A. It's a little bit slower league. There's not, you know, it's a different league than Premier League. Mm. 150. Contracts expires uh, 30th of June 2025. But here's what I want to get to, Jarvis. And this is my dubious mistake. Um, what I don't think... You know, if you look at his overall weaknesses, offsiders, offside awareness is very, very weak. One thing we can argue about, he's a goal scorer, right? Holding up the ball is weak. So it's not a martial type, right? His passing is weak, right? But, however, his finishing is very, very strong. His heading abilities, we all know his aerial threat, his heading, oh my God, it's world class, right? Aerial mm. draws is very strong. His style of play, if you look at it, his uh, indirect set piece is threat, definitely, on his heading abilities. We've seen that. I remember that he's like a basketball player, hangs up high in the air and stays there for a second or two. He likes to dribble, uh, does not dive into tackles. So if I look at his overall um, totals appearance, his 42 appearance, like in Serie A, Coppa Italia, you know, um, African Cup League, Champions League, uh, he scored in total all competitions 35 goals. 
Serie A 25 goals, Africa Nations League Nigeria for 5 goals. So, and total 4 assists in Serie A. So, if you look at his Serie A, 25 goals and 4 assists. Maybe that's a little bit out of date, but that's that's the latest report that I pulled just now. Yeah. 150. He I want to really good. Feelings. I must say Mickey looks really good. He, yeah, he scores does. a lot of goals. You know, he's he's been uh, been um, really dangerous for Napoli this season and uh, and um he's like an athlete. His body is built like an athlete. He can jump he high. Is. He he's strong. He um he knows where the goal stands. So hmm. yeah, he would he would be a good striker in in the squad. Uh, for me, I'm not hundred percent convinced. Uh, as you mentioned, I talked to to a couple of the Nigerian Nigerian uh, brothers uh, on the, on the Twitter, and not everybody is is uh, is uh, talking positive about him. They say he have uh, too many weaknesses in his game. Yeah, we see um, the weaknesses there. The stats don't lie, right? So, but, so if, if if we go for him, I'm afraid he will probably be a new uh, Darwin Noodles. Darwin Nunes, yes, yeah, perhaps, yeah. perhaps, perhaps. The only plausible thing, because we are talking to Kim Min Ye, and this pot potentially a double swoop. And the only thing that theoretically that I'm thinking what we can do as Manchester United can do is offer a swap. Martial goes to Napoli, and we pay the the um, what do you call it? Uh, let's say we pay like you know ninety million, and you you take Martial. Yeah, astute business, right? Because if we take a strike from them, they will probably need another strike. And I see Martial fitting well in the slower Serie A league. Yeah, I think Martial would would suit that league. But the, the thing with happening in Napoli now, you know, the Spalletti is is leaving, uh, Kim is probably leaving mm -hmm. now. Osimhen is leaving, so I don't think he want to stay in that team when they, when they fall apart. So uh, he mm. would probably want to leave. So uh, yeah, but Italian press is uh, is reporting heavily that he's favored to join Manchester United. But all although that's paper talk, but we got to look at the overall budget. So if we have approximately 500 million euros to spend or pounds he might fit into that budget barring mm. that yeah he's one of those three st strikers is on the top list top striker list and that's what we talked about harry kane Lutaro martinez and victor osman is in the top three bracket mm. to be honest will you take him hot meter we'll get that later on Moving on next to Victor Ozzyman, the fan favorite, what everyone wants. It's kind of the obsession. We want Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Mm. Knowing that he's 150, that's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. I put him on a 40. Unless we can come up with yeah. a swap deal. Yeah, I agree. 40%. I think he's too expensive for us. Uh, we don't want to waste all our money on one striker. Mm. I think we need at least uh, five players or maybe six or seven. Yeah. And guys, this is not a live recording. This is as actually a recorded message. So if you want to engage, leave a comments uh, in the comment section or engage with each other in the chat room. 